Right, Joe, what's your fourth tip, please? Right, tip number four. Use visual aids, including props, images, and online tools, to bring explanations alive. Oh, okay, right. Tell me more about this. Um, so again, I'm going to talk from a sort of maths pers perspective, but um, I think this probably applies in lots of other subjects as well, particularly um, science and, well, lots of subjects, geography, all sorts of things. Um, I, I remember going to see a science lesson a few years ago and the teacher was talking about a balloon and he was talking about filling a balloon with air and there was no balloon in the room. Mm. <laughs> I just thought he was talking about filling a balloon with air and he did not fill a balloon with air yeah, and it's yeah. a very, very, very simple thing to do. Um, what I've done recently is I've taught a lot of volume and surface area. I just happen to teach it like similar topics to three year groups. And when I was teaching surface area, um, I found a shoebox at home and I covered my shoebox in paper. This took about five minutes. I'm not someone who's going to sit at home and spend ages making props for my lessons. But I covered my shoebox in paper and I labelled the sides, the faces, sorry, A, B, C, D, E, nice. F. And then when I came, is that right? F. Um, and then when I came in um, to school, I had my prop for surface area. Um, when, uh, whenever I see a cylinder, Pringles tubes are great. I bring it into my classroom and I have a drawer full of cylinders. Um, and then when I'm talking about surface area of a cylinder, I'm sure lots of, I'm sure, I hope all maths teachers do this. I get a piece of paper and I wrap it around that cylinder yeah. and then I unwrap it and say, hey, look, what's this? Oh, it's a rectangle. And what's the length of that rectangle? You know, so I'm sure most teachers do that sort of thing. But basically, props are really, really powerful. And, um, and I use props alongside... Um, alongside uh, animations mm -hmm. and alongside visuals. So I think these things all work together. Um, but I do think, um, you know, I'm always on the lookout for things I can use as props. Um, and sometimes they don't work. Like I remember when I was a trainee or an NQT, um, I decided I wanted to make props for 3D Pythagoras. And I used, I bought pipe cleaners online. Like old school crafting tools and I made a cuboid out of pipe cleaners and then made that kind of space diagonal oh, and, I was, and it was just rubbish I mean it was yeah. flimsy rubbish that didn't work at all and I, <laughs> yeah. what I was talking about um, and now um, I talk about the room we're in and I, I talk to the students about the classroom and I talk about the space diagonal and I go, I literally like, they think I'm crazy because I run across the room and I go and stand in the one corner <laughs> and I talk about the other corner and the top end and I, I sort of and try and point to it, not tall enough. And I talk about the space diagonal. So now I'm kind of using the classroom as a prop. Nice. So, you know, we, and, and once, I mean, I haven't done, <laughs> once uh, when I was doing vectors for year 13 and you have to do, I can't even remember because I haven't taught it in so long, but I remember I once attached a bit of uh, wool <laughs> from one corner of the room oh, wow. to the other to demonstrate whatever it was I was teaching, I can't even remember. But, um, so I don't, I don't do this very much, but uh, in terms of like things that take a bit of effort to do, because I haven't got time to do it. But there are some topics where without a prop, you're really, you're really not helping your students yes. with, the, with understanding a concept. Um, now, like I say, it doesn't have to be a prop though. It can be um, a, a meter ruler is a good example of a visual. Like how can you teach units without for the entire lesson waving a, a meter ruler around because I, I don't put that meter ruler down when I'm teaching units I, in fact I pick up the meter ruler in many many lessons and then I like sort of I like pointing around with it but really I'm trying to say to them this is what a meter looks like and I say it so much surely they can never possibly forget what a meter ruler looks like because they think I'm a crazy person that's just always saying this is a meter don't forget um and then things like um uh lining people like if you're gonna if you're gonna talk about the concept of a median I don't, I don't necessarily get students out of their seats. I don't like doing that anymore. But it, used to, it might have been the time where I lined them up. But now I might say, right, I want you to visualise a line of students. And we're going to line them up in order of what they got on their last maths exam. And I said, <laughs> I would never do this to you because this is cruel. But let's imagine that I am a horrible teacher. Yeah. And I've got the person with the lowest mark standing over here. And this person got... 43% on their math exam and next to them I've got a person who got 45% because they did a bit better and I've got them all lined up and then right over by this wall over here this person got 100% this clever person is really pleased they're standing against this wall and everyone's thinking oh my god she's never going to do this is she? <laughs> um, and then I said I, I've got them all picturing this line of students and then I said right so what's the median score let's find the student standing in the middle of that line and let's picture that student and they're standing in the middle and they're looking they've got the same amount of people over here and they've got the same amount of people over here and that student's score is the median so this is an example of using it's not even a visual because I haven't got the students up there but it's a, it's a visualization um, so so that's one part of it but I, I also mentioned um, online tools mm -hmm. um, and it's really what's really interesting Craig is that when I did my PGCE I reckon like 
the only thing they taught me on my PGC was that I should learn to be a GeoGebra expert. Like, this was the one thing they said a million <laughs> times. They were like, it, and at the time it was ge- geometry, sketch pad, and, yeah. and GeoGebra. And obviously now we've got stuff like um, Desmos, and we have, um, well, I suppose there's Autograph, and uh, yeah. what else is there? There's loads of stuff. There's loads of cool tools you can use to, mm. um, to do, um, to, like, dynamic um, yeah. software that you can use to, to show geometry. Um, and I have never, I mean, I know you're a bit of an expert on these things, sort of autograph and things like that, but I've never learned how to build things on that. Yeah, I'm and not I great. don't think it matters because you can just Google it and someone else has done it for yes. you. So that I will Google um, surface area of a cylinder, GeoGebra, and I find that some lovely person has made a GeoGebra that, where I can move a little slider along yes. and it unwraps that on the board yes. for me. So I would use that as well as a physical prop. Um, and I think that a lot of teachers don't know that you can Google GeoGebra and other people have made all these amazing things. Like even last week I was teaching congruent triangles and it didn't occur to me that if you Google GeoGebra congruent triangles, there's some really cool stuff yeah. you can use. Um, and basically you can use dynamic software to explain mass concepts without having to know how to use dynamic software because lovely people have all put it online for us. Right. So and yes, I'm talking we... about dynamic software, I'm talking about actual props and I'm talking about visuals, um, basically anything to help our students get over and remember and understand the concepts we're trying to explain. I love it. Right, a few things about this. So I couldn't agree, couldn't agree more with you. And um, GeoGebra has come on leaps and bounds, right? The things yeah. that people can do on that just absolutely blows my mind. I'm exactly the same. I'm a Google GeoGebra surface area, or well, whatever, whatever it is, I do the same. Um, so a couple of things there. One thing that's great about all visuals, but particularly I think this works well with the online stuff more, is you can change something and observe the effect it has. You're not fixed with this like hand-drawn diagram, this static thing on the board. Mm -hmm. But one thing I think there's a danger of, and I don't know if you agree here, so obviously a lot of the JoJo stuff has these sliders and stuff and things changing everywhere. I think there's a real danger as teachers we can just kind of just whiz things from left to right and things, magic things happen on the board. And it's just, it's almost like watching a movie for the kids. Whereas if you say, right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to increase the length of this dimension, what impact do you predict that's going to have? Think, think about it yourself, maybe put it on a mini whiteboard or something, and now I'm going to do it. That way that they're a bit more engaged in it. It has meaning mm-hmm. to them. They then have an opportunity to explain it, discuss. Whereas whenever there's loads of sliders, and it's the same, same on Desmos, when you, when you do like Y equals MX plus C, and then you just kind of increase the value of M, things are just whizzing around without that time for the kids to, to just have a think, what do I think is going to happen now? This has actually happened. Do I understand why? So, yeah, I, I've been guilty of, of that in the past. Anything you want to say about that before I tell you the next thing? Yeah, well, you've made me think of a good example on MassPad, um, and these are they're probably, Geo has got some of these as well. MassPad has a great animation of um, exterior angles in a polygon and how if you shrink that polygon down, they all sum to 360. Yeah. Um, and I think, um, yeah, I, I've, I've definitely, there's been times where I've just, like, let's look at the five sides, let's look at six sides, yeah. the ten sides. Oh, look, it keeps adding up to yeah, 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 yeah. Like you say, it's a bit too quick. So thinking about it now, based on what you said, it probably would be better to say, right, so we're going to start with this fi- uh, pentagon, and let's, let's uh, watch what happens when I shrink it down, and look, all those angles sum into 360. What shall I do next? Yeah, Miss, can you try six it. sides? What do you think might happen? So, yeah, you're right. I think I've been guilty of going too quickly on those things and getting them to either make a prediction or keep a record of what they've seen. Yes. So, you know, like um, five sides, three, uh, 360, and then, like, you know, them actually keeping a record as you do the demonstration. It's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. And particularly, as you say there, getting the kids to say, saying to the kids, what do you want me to do next? What do you want me to try next? That's always a lovely thing. Okay, so Joe wants me to try this. What do we all think is going to happen here? Write it down, have a thing. Yeah, really nice. And the final thing I want to say is <laughs> dodgy props. It was interesting you mentioned the pipe cleaner stuff. Like, I'm crap at <laughs> anything, creating anything like that. But I always remember um, when Danny Quinn came on my Mr. Bart Maths podcast years and years ago, I think it might have been when I asked her what um, her favourite failure was. And she described, and I don't know if you've done this lesson, I've tried this and it's a disaster. It's when you're teaching surface area of a sphere. Um, and Danny described bringing, oh, in yeah. an o- bringing in an orange. The orange, yeah. yeah. No, I've never done that. <laughs> and peeling it, because of course, I mean, I, what's the surface area of... I always forget whether it's the four-thirds uh, one four or... It's four-piles, four-piles, 
Full pile squad. Full pile squad, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the, the, the brilliant idea is, of course, you peel this orange yeah. and it's going to fit brilliantly into four circles, all of it, <laughs> and it never, ever does. No. So you end up kind of, dis, you, you kind of get in the kid's mind that this thing doesn't work before they even see what the thing is. So, yeah, I'm all for the props, but it's, it's got to be one that you're pretty sure is going to convey the idea powerfully. Yeah, it's interesting because Sevda and Sphere, I've never done that one, but I used to have a giant tennis ball, which I lost at one score. I have no idea what happened to it, but you know, I bought this, you know, you we, we shouldn't be spending money on these things. No. So, like, I should not have bought a giant tennis ball just to show Sir Sir Sphere. If you look at the markings on a tennis ball, you know how it's got that kind of it's like a, it's like two circles that are joined together wrapped yes. around each other. Like, yes. a, a tennis ball is the one that shows that you can, don't see it on other types of ball. Um, and that, and then basically, if you unwrap those parts, you get these four circles. Oh, um, so I always thought nice. that was quite a nice way of showing it. Although again, it's still not ideal because. It's like a circle with a bit in the middle and another circle. Right. And they kind of blur together in the middle, but actually it is equivalent to four four circles. But again, it, it's not the perfect thing. But yeah, so I think you're right. There are some things, particularly to do with, well, a sphere is a really good example. of you, If you're going to prove, or if you're going to show them the derivation of the surface area or volume of a sphere, I believe you need to use calculus to do that. I might be wrong. Mm, I believe that. I think so. Yeah, I think, I think you need to, to do that. Um, with much more advanced maths, and it is quite frustrating. There are some things that we can't actually um, explain the why because the students haven't done um, advanced enough maths. So that's probably one of these ones where you can just, you can just tell them the formula and it's fine. Or like show them a, uh, like a, an online version that you know works. Like you know, you can imagine a fancy GeoGebra one that, that demonstrates yeah. it, and then oh yeah, and a good example of that is with the um, the ones you know. <laughs> I now show for a third, the cylinder, a cone being a third of a cylinder. Yep. I've just got a, a couple oh, of demonstrations. I've yeah. got a picture that shows it, and I've got a demonstration that shows it. And I am certainly not, I mean, I never did this, but I always intended to somehow get hold of a cone and a cylinder that had exactly the same height and radius <laughs> and fill one with either water or sand yeah. and pour it in. Now, I've never done that, <laughs> but I remember I used to want to do it. I just couldn't get hold of the right equipment. Um, but yeah, I think that's fine done with a. Um, with an animation. Yeah. I don't think we need to take the water in the classroom necessarily. Some people might do it really well, but I don't think we need to kill ourselves trying to do these things. <laughs>